Hey everyone, Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com and it's Intel 12th Gen time. Let's do this. Oh, I can't believe I forgot to buy a bloody mouse. If only there was a Champion Series gaming mouse that I could pair with my brand new Corsair K70 RGB TKL keyboard. <clears throat> Excuse me, there is. The new Corsair Saber RGB Pro Champion Series gaming mouse, built for and tested by top esports professionals. Where's that voice coming from? With an 18,000 DPI optical sensor, capable of up to 8,000 Hz hyperpoling and ultra responsive quick strike buttons, pair it with that keyboard of yours and you too can hang out with the pros. Really? Well, not you, Andy. Oh. But everyone else can. Click the link in the description to find out more. So today is the day where we can talk about Intel 12th gen to a certain degree. We can't talk about benchmarks, we can't talk about performance, anything like that, but we can actually show you what we've got here. Now, if you're buying this retail, this is not what you're gonna get, apologies. You are actually gonna get something that does look quite cool. It's like a blue box and it's kind of got the, the chip in there and things like that, but this is kind of more for media. So we get this. So we take off this little Intel sleeve and then we end up getting this kind of fancy looking box underneath, which yeah, looks quite cool. Intel always try and sort of do something, every generation, something a little bit different. So we've had kind of these presentation boxes where you get both chips, the i5 and the i9, then they do these other kind of things. And yeah, they just kind of always try and better themselves. And I think secretly, they're also trying to better kind of what AMD have done in the past, because they always try and go quite extravagant on their review stuff. So magnetic box. Quite nice. This is literally going to live on a shelf. Might even put it behind me at some point for kind of future content. But when we open it up, this is kind of what we're greeted with. So built for the next generation of gaming. And then there's the Intel logo on here. And straight away, I can see something that just looks absolutely just, you know, completely different to anything that we've seen. So this is basically what one of the processors looks like because for anyone who doesn't know, these new processors do kind of take things a little bit differently. They're not just your conventional, you know, we've got eight cores, we've got 16 threads. These are actually more of a hybrid solution. So instead you've got different types of cores for different kind of workloads. So we have basically P cores or performance cores and then E cores or efficiency cores. And I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I can't look at this and be like, oh yes, I can see exactly where this is and where that is, but I can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then down here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, there's more. Uh, these are the actually the efficiency cores from what I remember. We, we basically went to an Intel event. They kind of gave us the whole, you know, the normal spiel of this is what it is, this is what it means, yada, yada, yada. And if I remember rightly, these are actually the efficiency cores. So we've got four up there. And then these are the uh, efficiency cores down here. And then these bigger ones are actually the performance cores, which do have hyper threading. So this is based on the i9-12900K. So you've basically got eight efficiency cores, eight performance cores, but the performance cores also have, have hyper threading. Now, the whole kind of thing behind the way that it actually works is depending on the workload that you're doing will depend on how and what cores actually handle with it and how they prioritize things. And this is especially so the case in the likes of Windows 11. The problem we've got is obviously there's still a lot of hoo-ha up in the air about how we're actually gonna be doing our testing because when we compare against AMD, which have only recently had a fix on Windows 11, so do we continue to sort of do, do all of our tests on Windows 10? I actually wanna hear what you guys think about this in the comments section. Would you rather see us test this kind of stuff on Windows 10 or would you rather us see it tested on Windows 11? Because we don't wanna compare apples to oranges. We wanna make it a completely fair level playing field, not just between AMD and Intel, but between Intel and their older generation stuff as well. Now, when we actually come to open this back up again, this is kind of what you'll see uh, as a media kit. So we've got the i5 and the i9. So let's take the i5 out and show you exactly what it's about. Now, normally we don't do much content when it comes to processors because, I mean, the last few generations, all the processors look exactly the same. So is there really any point us kind of showing you it? But LGA 1700, so there's 1700 pins now on the socket, which the only way of getting that amount of pins in was literally to make the CPU even bigger. And that's why now it's more of a rectangle than a square. So you can actually see the CPU itself, the surface area as a whole has actually got bigger. So this is the i5-12600K. 
Now again, I've been going through so much information when it comes to Z690, when it comes to these processors, the main one I've been focusing on is the i9-12900K. So I can tell you it's got eight cores. It's got eight cores with hyper-threading. So in total, it's actually got 16 cores, but 24 threads. I'm sure you can work out the math from there. And we'll probably actually overlay some kind of, you know, uh, screenshot stuff where you can see exactly what the specs are on uh, on this chip as well as on the uh, 12900K as well. But I'm not even gonna lie and say, oh yeah, I know all the full specs on the i5-12600K because I simply don't. The main one, which I think a lot of people are going to be interested in, is going to be this one, which is the i9-12900K. So Intel were very, very coy with what they told us as well. And one of the key things they told us, and I'm hoping I can actually get away with this, is that with the 12900K, and I think just the 12th gen as a, as a whole, these hybrid solution processors, you are actually going to have a fair amount of headroom when it comes to overclocking. I'm hoping I'm not going to get in trouble for saying this, but I haven't even... I've put this in a board to update uh, the BIOSes on the boards, but I haven't actually done any testing on these whatsoever. I haven't done any overclocking at the time of filming this. I wanted to get this out because there are two dates in mind. There is the 27th, which is where we can basically show you this video, as well as all the other motherboard previews that we've got and show off some DDR5 and that kind of good stuff. But we can't show you any performance figures until the 4th of November. So if you're not subscribed already, make sure that you do get subscribed for that because it's going to be a very, very interesting day for Intel and just the community as a whole because, and I say this time and time again in all of our videos, when you have competition, AMD, Intel, um, you know, that, that kind of thing, there's only going to be one winner. It's going to be you guys as a consumer. So there is going to be a lot to talk about. We're going to get more onto that on the 4th of November when we have our fully fledged reviews of these. We can talk about performance figures and, and things like that. But I wanted to kind of give you guys kind of a first glimpse of, you know, what the processor looks like, what Intel are kind of kind of saying without giving too much away. But from the get go, yeah, there's going to be head sort of headroom for overclocking. And I'm sure you're going to see that on the likes of HW bot. And maybe we're actually, you know, submit some results ready for the day and everything. And uh, when we come around to do that performance wise, if the leaks are anything to go by, it's going to be very, very interesting for Intel. And the fact that you have all these new technologies as well. So we have, you know, improved speeds when it comes to USB 3.2, Gen 2 by 2. We have Wi-Fi 6E as standard. We have Thunderbolt 4 on a lot of boards. We have DDR5, PCI Express Gen 5. It's going to be an interesting time, and I'd love to see what AMD are going to come up with to kind of combat this. But for us, this was the whole point of this, doing a preview, showing you exactly what we've actually got here, what we're going to be testing, and yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, you know exactly what to do, and I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.